make my living tattooing uh, regular folk, you know what I mean? Uh, blue collar, hard working homies, you know what I mean? I think that's the reason a lot of people uh, come to me though and do interviews because I've been able to tattoo celebrities, you know? But if I waited on celebrities to come in here, man, I'd be doing bad, you know what I'm saying? The first platinum recording artist I ever tattooed was Cypress Hill. They let me do their um, stage design, the tour shirts. Then I would do other local groups in LA. But when I would come out to New York, I started to do Meth, Red, Eric Sermon, Nas, DJ Premier. And it all started to change when I tattooed Eminem. I no longer needed a portfolio or you know, here, check out my picture. You can just look at Entertainment Weekly, Rolling Stone. I even got a tattoo with your name across the chest. And then from doing M's tattoos, I started doing Shaw Money. You know, we came and started getting a bunch of tattoos, and 50 would come with them. He just let me do what I wanted to do, man. He just wanted to represent the city, his life, tell a life story inside of the 50 and put his area over top in Southside Queens, you know. So, Southside Jamaica, so he, he dedicated the city to his back, you know, and, and just let people know what it is, not the ultimate sacrifice. I think the way we got to get known by people was being consistent, doing a lot of interviews like this. You know, usually tattooers, they don't like to do no interviews, man. They, they ain't really good at, um, it, 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 it kind of a business, you know, they ain't really salesmen, you know. People walk in the shop, the tattoo shop, and they go to the counter and they be like, you want to get tattooed or what? That's their sales pitch, you know what I mean? Learn something, make something, create a community, give something back, help somebody. I was out for a while constant. People are so like, man, I'm money. This, I need to get money, money. Money is, is a piece of paper with, with the old president face on it, man. That ain't gonna make you happy, man. You know, helping somebody, you know, working with someone else, man. That's what's gonna make you happy. Money comes and goes. You know, once you stop focusing on money, then it'll come into your life. But if you just focus on making money, then you'll never have enough. You'll never be happy. Last 10 years I've been focused on going into the California Youth Authority for kids and going into high schools and junior highs and telling these kids what it is to be an artist and how I did it and how I turned it around and how as a kid, you know, uh, I made certain decisions that, that you know, could have twisted me and got me killed and or put me away, you know. We did this Righteous Kill movie, man, it was incredible to get asked to do that imagery for the movie that was gonna go into that cover, you know what I mean? All the movie theaters and the billboards and all that. Originally, they just wanted me to do a skateboard design for them, you know? But we were able to get blessed to do the whole campaign. And, yeah, it's the one to get another miracle, you know what I'm saying? You should be careful with that. Boy, are you jealous? Or maybe you killed him. You guys think we're looking for one of our own? What if it was an ex-cop? Try to cover it up. Most people respect the badge. Everyone respects the gun. Well, I kind of always looked at De Niro and Pacino as, as influences in my life, because it was never really artists, artists that were doing what I wanted to do, you know what I mean? So I couldn't really, like in rap, it's already kind of laid out. You can look at 50, you could look at a Fabulous, or you can look at, you know what I'm saying, a Cypress Hill and kind of mold and build yourself after them if you want to be a rapper. But for this type of thing, you know, it just wasn't set up like that. I had to do a lot of guesswork and shit. And I also do other things, you know, I design shoes for Nike. We have a retail store called The Last Laugh. We have all the exclusive Air Force Ones. Go check out our store, man. You know, I've had um, custom phones come out from T-Mobile. And I just try to, you know, stay current and, and keep working. <laughs> Invest, put your money in because one day you're gonna come up and you're gonna wanna do something and you don't wanna get bootlegged, man. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes people go bootleg my t shirts and go make fake Air Force Ones in different color schemes. It's crazy, man. But, you know, 
uh, you gotta support the movement, you know, instead of uh, tripping on someone else or doing something like that, go and take you 20 bucks or whatever and, and buy the album, look at the artwork unfold it, see who produced it. That, that's half the fun, you know what I mean? I don't even download records. When I go on MrCartoon.com, my website, the blog, we blog every day and update all the tattoos or cars that we're building. All that stuff gets updated every single day. What up, it's your homeboy Mr. Cartoon right here in New York City. Kicking it. You're watching this is 50.com.